This is part two of my full quintessential quintuplet story breakdown. If you haven't seen part one yet, I highly suggest watching that one first. The Our Day Off arc, more commonly called the Fireworks arc, is short but manages to pack a lot into a short amount of time. Instead of focusing on Futuro's relationship with any of the girls or his efforts to improve their grades, the arc instead focuses on how the family dynamics are changing with his influence. Ichika, the oldest sibling, and Nino, the most family-focused sibling, get the most development but the others have their fair share of moments. The arc is almost entirely from Futuro's perspective, but he's more of a passive presence, doing what he can to get all five of them together before the large fireworks display ends. He even asks himself why he's even bothering with this multiple times. It's his day off. It's everyone's day off. Yet he's still putting in the work. He tells himself that it's to gain Nino's approval and make his job easier, but really, there's just more to that old promise than merely studying hard. The arc actually starts off by putting the focus on Itsuki and Futuro's little sister Raiha. Here we also get a rare glimpse at what Futuro does when he's not at school or with the girls. He's studying. He really is that much of a loser that he completely revels in it. But even with the short amount of time that's passed up to this point, the effect of the girls is starting to take root. Instead of absorbing all this information for himself, he starts thinking of ways to use it to help the quints. Once again, this is actually a hint at the true reason Futuro studies so hard, even if Futuro himself forgot the details of that promise. It's in the stupor that he comes face to face with Itsuki again. At first he thinks she's a debt collector, which, speaking from experience, it's a real instinct for people that owe money. When he sees who it is, he assumes it's a prank. Lucky for the both of them, Raiha shows up and low-key. Raiha is one of the few characters in the series who isn't emotionally stunted, and she's like 12. Itsuki is there to give him his payment for the sessions. They may have been a bust, but their father doesn't need to know that. And in a rare bout of honesty, Itsuki convinces Futuro by saying that there's been a change in all five of them. Of course she backpedals saying that she hasn't changed at all, which is not true. They all learned not to jump to conclusions about him. Beyond that, Miku is the only one to have significantly changed. But the thing about change when it comes to people is that it tends to spread. I know a lot of people are probably going to want me to talk more about Yotsuba, but I'm kind of saving that for the part of the story that recontextualizes all of this. Regardless, we get inside of Futuro's base motivations. Financial compensation is a means, never an end. His end is to support his family and make Raiha happy. So he uses some of that money to take her out and Itsuki tags along because this face is her kryptonite. So they enjoy their fun and games until Raiha asks them to take a picture. Neither of them are fully on board, but they have fun in each other's awkwardness. That is until Futuro complains about not studying and pesters Itsuki to do the same. And then they run into the others, ready to go to the festival. Their reactions are telling. Miku is happy that they're all together now to go to the festival. Ichika teases them because it looks like they're on a date. Nino gets mad at Itsuki for spending time with Futuro. And Yotsuba goes right to Raiha, invites her along, and in a big brain move, uses her to drive drag Futuro along on this memory-making night. After all of you are done with your work! And because of the scattered nature of this arc, the rest of this video will be categorical, covering the plot threads individually instead of how they are presented in the manga. I alluded in part one that the only way for Futuro to get to Nino is through her sisters. The five of us used to get along really well, remember? We used to. We see that made manifest as chapter 8 begins. She complains, she argues, but ultimately she sticks with her sisters. They listen to Futuro, so she listens to Futuro, even if she is hating every minute of it with every fiber of her being. He's not exactly happy about it either, but he's there for Raiha, and Raiha wanted to hang out with the Nakano, so the Quints are forced to hang out with Futuro. Despite neither of them being all too happy, this is also the thing that brings them closer. Nino is the familial idiot. She will do anything for her sisters. That includes stupid or impulsive things, and because she is not that smart, even by Quint standards, she doesn't always do it in the best way. She cares so much about watching the fireworks with her sisters because it's tradition. It's something they did with their mother every year until she died. This is so important that Nina rented out a rooftop to give them the best view, and it didn't cross her mind that she might be separated from them, so she didn't tell them where the rooftop was. Similarly, until Futuro showed up, she didn't think anything could separate her from her sisters, and more specifically, 
specifically, it was when she saw Miku take his side in the prior chapters. And because Murphy's Law is at play in this arc, Nino does get separated from the rest. The only one she doesn't lose track of is Futuro. Then when she gets a hold of Yotsuba, she asks where she and Raiha are instead of telling them where she and Futuro are. They also spot Ichika in the crowd, but because Futuro's phone is useless anyway, he volunteers himself to get Ichika and the others back to Nino before the fireworks end and she reluctantly puts her faith in him. Nino stays there until the end of the arc. Even though Futuro failed in his quest, he did manage to do some good, particularly with Ichika. They do all end up spending some time together and light their own fireworks. Thus, the tradition itself changes form. Yes, they all watch fireworks on that special day, but it's no longer the bombastic display of pyrotechnics. Instead, it's a more intimate display and it's no longer the five of them alone. Futuro and Raiha are with them, and will likely be with them for every festival from here on out. During the height of the festival, Futuro tries gathering all the sisters. In this case, the problem mainly comes from Ichika. There are, however, a pair of isolated incidents, one with Miku and one with Itsuki, that provide greater context to Ichika's plight and Futuro's own character arc. This dichotomy is first alluded to before they are separated. Itsuki is sporting a different hairstyle and Futuro has trouble recognizing her, which ticks her off. Ichika tells him he should compliment a girl who changes her hair. Miku hears this and does the same when she begins questioning her own feelings. After being separated from Ichika for the first time, Miku finds him. She hurt her foot so she can't do much. Futuro tries carrying her but isn't strong enough and of course expresses it in the least sensitive way possible. This isn't working, you're way too heavy. In their time together, Futuro thinks about the run-in with Ichika and her manager, and the question of what his relationship with the girls is. This is asked again while with Miku when they are mistaken for a couple. Futuro tries being honest, and Miku gets a little hurt about that and hasn't quite realized why. They spot Itsuki and Futuro leaves Miku behind, where she remains for the rest of the fireworks. He asks the question again, this time to Itsuki. I find it humorous and odd at the same time. This is the first time Futuro is shown confiding in Itsuki with things he doesn't ask any of the other girls, which will be a trend. But Itsuki is also the second most spiteful of him and says he's a total stranger at best. Even with her own negative feelings, she still plays the part of his friend and tells him what he needs to hear. What his relationship is is, should be up to him. I brought up both of these encounters before delving into what happens with Ichika because this is a very important question that will continue to shift as the story carries forward. What is his relationship with these girls? At first, they were nothing but professional obligation, but as Miku points out, there's something else going on. This has nothing to do with studying. As far as they can tell, this is out of character for him. He's not even sure himself. He saw how much this mattered to them and he naturally wants to help. It goes to show, just as he has a long way to go before understanding the girls, the girls have a ways to go before understanding him, and they all have a ways to go before they can truly understand themselves. At the start of the series, Ichika wasn't openly antagonistic to Futuro, but her worldview was in stark contrast. Futuro saw romance and fun as a waste of time and believed that a student's mind should be solely dedicated to studying. Ichika believed that studying was a waste of time because they're all dumb and hopeless and, for her, good grades aren't necessary to fulfill her ambitions. And if studying is a waste of time, you might as well spend that time enjoying your youth. Ichika is the first one Futuro runs into after leaving Nino and she's by far the biggest pain. Even before they get separated, she starts taking calls and distancing herself from the girls. She seriously flirts with Futuro, which he's not exactly okay with. And she's the only one whose face we don't see at the end of chapter 8, hinting at her plans for the festival. When Futuro first tries collecting her, he's stopped by her manager, who asks him what his relationship with her is. Various answers run through his head, but by the time he decides on one, she's gone and Miku finds him. And when I first watched this, I thought it was really sketchy. It was really looking like she was doing, um, less than legal things with her body. I mean, if this was LA and not meant to be the wholesome harem, this dude would be giving serious Harvey Weinstein vibes. She manages to locate him again and, for lack of a better word, kidnaps him away from Itsuki to tell him that she won't be watching the fireworks with her sisters. She tries reasoning with him and he doesn't buy it. She tries questioning him 
and he stands firm. She's just a daydreaming idiot sacrificing this family tradition and the happiness of her sisters to try out for a movie. She also ran away from her manager to deliver this message and doesn't want to be busted with Futuro again, so she gives him a hug while her manager passes by. At this point, she calls him a friend, which is also what Miku wanted to call him, and it's actually Futuro that tries shooting it down. He does bring up a point. He's not the kind of person to have friends. And if not for the job, he wouldn't have even gotten involved with the girls in the first place. Ichika is upset at this and lets him know how rude it is, and he finally starts to get it. He realizes he probably upset Miku as well. Futuro's point of conflict with Ichika is fun versus work. Ichika wants them all to enjoy their youth and fulfill their dreams. Futuro understands studying is important and that a better education leads to better jobs. To which Ichika asks the fabled question, why do you study? Why? The question triggers a memory of a girl. Though neither of them realize it, this question is what bound them together by the threads of fate. It's a promise Futuro has been subconsciously following for five years without remembering much about the who and the why, and it ties directly into this arc. He studies so that he could better help and support the people he loves. All this time they have been five parts of a whole. This may be about a family coming together, but a large part of that is them becoming independent. And throughout the story they become five individuals in their own right. All this time, the girls have had no one but each other to rely on. Ichika is the first one to break that mold and often forces that change in a destructive way. And her whole arc is about learning the value of studying and spending what time they have left together. Because graduation is going to come someday. They're all going to get careers and get married someday. And when that happens, someone like Ichika might regret not spending one more festival or one more field trip with the only people she loves. This scene is interrupted when the manager mistakes Miku for Ichika. Futuro intervenes and the question is raised again. He takes everything he had heard from the girls up to this point to find his own answer. He is their partner. Their grades, his role as their tutor, his family's financial situation, they are all in this together. Turns out the gig which Ichika implied was a behind the scenes thing was actually an acting gig. Ichika is still dead set on chasing this chance rather than following tradition. I don't often think of what ifs, but I'm going to bring one up here. Had Futuro not been there, Ichika would have left anyway. The tradition would have been shattered and it would have begun a divide with the sisters as they drift apart. In this way, Futuro becomes the opposite of Nino's fears and actually pulls them together. He understands Ichika won't make it to the fireworks, but he also figures one very important thing out. This decision is tearing Ichika apart. How he is able to tell? Who knows? Maybe he just cares that much, maybe everyone who isn't blinded by nostalgia of familial bonds would be able to see it, but her smile throughout all this has been fake. In his words, her smile is different from her sister's. She tries to convince him by showing him the script and has him read lines. And of course, the role is very fitting for what their relationship is. Or it would be more fitting if Ichika hadn't been a pain for him. It's a cute comedic scene that does take a turn for the dramatic when Futuro calls her out, pours his heart out, and then asks her to do the same. And it's true. She's staking everything on this audition. She didn't want to tell her sisters until she had something to show for. If she fails, it can throw their family dynamic into chaos. She wanted something to be proud of as their big sister. And this is something Futuro can relate to. And when she tries to congratulate him, he downplays it by saying something even more impressive. I noticed that your smile wasn't the same as all the others. And that sentiment is what's going to pave the way for several other plot points. She does end up nailing the role and Futuro joins her to apologize to the others. They have fun after that audition, lighting their own fireworks and thanking Futuro for putting in the effort. There are a few other noteworthy bits like Miku and Ichika picking the same sparkler, foreshadowing their conflict during the bonfire arc and onward. And Yotsuba buying the fireworks not only gives her more relevance than she would have had otherwise, but it's also another example of her undying support for Futuro. The result may not have been what they initially desired, but the effort is what matters, not the result. If you keep working hard, your efforts will be rewarded someday. The efforts made here in the fireworks arc will pay off in later arcs, just as their efforts with their grades will be rewarded in future tests. And that will be a lesson all the girls learn within the next few chapters. This concludes part two of my quintessential breakdown of quintessential quintuplets.